Hey dear students, welcome back. This is Dr. Hadi here. This uh, topic was recorded in Urdu language for the students of FSE, but now I'm again I'm going to record it in English version uh, for my channel Medical Glow by Dr. Hadi because most of the, uh, my students are waiting for the video. This video was very interesting. This this topic was very interesting. That therefore I thought that I would record it for the FSE students as well as for the master level students in Urdu as well as in, in English. This version which you people are watching is in English. I would like to I would try my best to deliver it in more in simplest most uh, level simple English right so don't say please record this in Urdu it, this will be in, in, in English right fine okay what are neurotransmitters neurotransmitters are those substances it's a chemical substance which helps in the transmission of nerve impulse from one neuron into another neuron this is one neuron and this is another neuron you know what is neuron neuron is a special cell in in our nervous system which is specialized in generating the nerve impulse and transforming the nerve impulse from one neuron into another neuron. fine so these nerve impulse which need to move from one neuron into another neuron they need some kind of chemicals without these chemicals nerve impulse will not be able to jump from one neuron into another neuron therefore there is a certain special type of chemical substance in between the two neuron these chemical substances help the nerve impulse to jump from one neuron into another and we call these nerve substances as neurotransmitters now the neurotransmitters are of two types one is the excitatory and other one is inhibitory neurotransmitters excitatory neurotransmitters are those neurotransmitters which allow the nerve impulse to pass from one neuron into another neuron they allow so i would like to write here okay means they allow the nerve impulse they allow the message to cross that bridge and enter into the next neuron and also would like to remember that the, the neuron number one the first neuron in which the nerve impulse is the nerve impulse is coming is called the presynaptic neuron and the second neuron is called post synaptic neuron and the word synap actually refers to the the, the the space between the two neuron that is called the synapse and a little bit gap which you can see here is a little bit gap is there this gap is called the synaptic cleft this gap is called the synaptic the synaptic cleft this gap is called the synaptic cleft okay this video lecture is already recorded in Urdu so if you if you feel some kind some kind of difficulty while listening to English you can switch yourself to the Urdu mode I would like to write the in the title in Urdu and in English so this gap is called as a synaptic cleft in that gap you will find these neurotransmitter these substances are found here okay one thing more that we have uh, what kind of ions we have uh, along the membrane of the neuron because if this is a cell it must have a cell membrane so what is this this is this is a cell membrane uh, this is very important for me to tell you that is a cell membrane most of the students think that cell membrane is a part of the cell okay fine you are right cell membrane is a part of the cell but neuron is also a cell neuron is also a cell so if neuron is a cell it must have the cell membrane so this is the cell membrane of the neuron and this is the cell membrane of the another neuron what you will find along that membrane in normal state you will find sodium ions a lot of sodium ions sodium ions sodium ions lot of sodium ions in, in 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 a row here along the membrane and because sodium carries 
uh, positive charge so we will write a lot of positive charges here these are, these are positive charges R right and normally and the outside of the neuron is positive and the inside of the neuron normally is negative so what we write here we write negative this is the neuron the state of neuron in normal condition and we call it that the neuron is at rest so what happens when for the first time when a nerve impulse is generating in the neuron what happens actually that sodium ion crosses the membrane and enters inside the neuron the sodium ion crosses the membrane and enters the inside of the neuron there is some kind of a gate opens you can consider some some sort of a holes are there they could they are being created right a gate is there you will find gate and the, that gate is opened and the sodium ions enter the core of the neuron once the sodium ion enters the neuron inside this will become a positive place now so many sodium ion will come they will become positive many sodium ion come it, this place will become positive sodium ion from outside came in inside while outside will be given a negative charge now you will think why because if uh, sodium leaves its place then we assign a negative charge because this is a word for physics that if a positive ion so if sodium leaves its place then we will write negative uh, charge over there so the outside will become negative and the inside will become positive this is another state another condition of the neuron when the neuron was negative from inside we said it is resting when the neuron is positive inside this is called exciting this neuron is now conducting the nerve impulse so now come back to the excitatory neurotransmitters the excitatory neurotransmitters they allow the sodium ion to enter into the, the, and then, uh, that space right how by by increasing the permeability of the membrane the permeability means increase permeability means more sodium ion will enter increase permeability so permeability means permission something come from outside inside or from inside outside this is called permeability so these are those chemical substance which increase the permeability for what for sodium to come inside so that the ne neuron becomes a positive inside and negative outside so this was the definition uh, they cause increased permeability to the sodium ion and thus triggers what trigger nerve impulse so as a result you will see a nerve impulse generating from uh, transferring from one neuron into another neuron the example of excitatory uh, neurotransmitters are acetylcholine epinephrine serotonin and dopamine acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter in the peripheral nervous system what is peripheral nervous system we know very well that brain this is your brain and this is your spinal cord brain and spinal cord all the nerves that arise from the brain and spinal cord they make our peripheral nervous system so acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter of the peripheral nervous system while epinephrine serotonin and dopamine even norepinephrine which is also uh, a really closely related chemical compound to that epinephrine slight difference is there in the structure so epinephrine and norepinephrine you know there is another name of epinephrine as well it is called adrenaline you can also write adrenaline and noradrenaline these three neurotransmitters are actually derived from the amino acid amino acid contain amino group so they are called biogenic amines biogenic amines these three neurotransmitters are found in the central nervous system and you know what is central nervous system that is brain and spinal cord inside brain you will find these one thing more i would like to share 
that is acetylcholine, epinephrine, serotonin, dopamine, these four neurotransmitters. Uh, and there are so many other neurotransmitters, there's uh, around 50 neurotransmitters inside our brain, around 50 different neurotransmitters in our brain. What these neurotransmitters are actually doing there, they actually uh, regulate our mood. They are involved in our mood changes. You are happy, you are excited, you win a match and then after that match you become excited, you, you lose a match and you become sad or, or some, something bad happens. So with, the, with these your mood changes, also there will be some mood changes. So mood changes, excitation, happiness, even you are sleeping well and you are not sleeping, your sleep is disturbed. All of these mood changes, including pleasure and sleep, these are because of these neurotransmitters. And you know, some people, uh, when they can't get proper sleep, they take uh, SSRIs, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. You take, you just go and meet that patient and tell him uh, what kind of drugs, medicine you have for, 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 for the proper sleep. And he or she will give you the in the packet of the drug and you will find SSRIs, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Maybe you, you, you see these words somewhere else. So this was about the excitatory neurotransmitters and now come to the inhibitory neurotransmitters. Inhibitory neurotransmitters are those which perform inverse of the excitatory neurotransmitters. Inverse means these inhibitory neurotransmitters, these will not allow the sodium ion to enter means these neurotransmitter will not allow the insight to become positive and the outside to become negative. So in simple words, these will stop the signal. These will not allow the signal to go ahead. So these are GABA, gamma amino butyric acid, GABA amino butyric acid. This is a neurotransmitter and endorphins. Endorphins is another neurotransmitter which is involved in the depression of the pain, perception of the pain. Uh, means if you have some pain in your body, so these substance naturally decrease the pain of your body, in your body. So it's a natural, usually when you get some injury, you get some injury, you take uh, drugs from outside and these drugs will decrease the pain, right? The, 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 these were the drugs that uh, you taken from outside. But inside your body, you have natural substances that decrease pain to a limit. These are called endorphins. And endorphin, these are, also, are called hormones as well as neurotransmitters. Right, so they are involved in decreasing the perception of the pain. They decrease the pain. These are, these are also neurotransmitters, and they are inhibitory neurotransmitters. So GABA and endorphins. GABA, is, you, you will find GABA in different kinds of other disease. Right, you will find this name on many drugs available in the medical store. Once, maybe if you come to this field, okay. Now there is another uh, thing related to this nerve gas called sarin, how it causes death of the person. Okay, in order to get the idea of the nerve gas, sarin, let me explain how acetylcholine is involved in the muscle contraction. When, when you contract your muscle, uh, your muscle, how, the, how it happens? Actually, uh, as we have already discussed that acetylcholine, is the neurotransmitter in the peripheral nervous system. So uh, outside your brain and, and cord, you will find acetylcholine. So brain is connected with the, your muscle. So when you want to contract your muscle, acetylcholine is released. And these acetylcholine, uh, they are attached uh, at the muscle, right? Because the, the nerve, the neuron, ultimately enters the muscle, fine? So when a uh, neurotransmitter is attached, acetylcholine is attached at the muscle, what happens? Muscle will contract. Acetylcholine release, it will uh, attach with the cell of the muscle and as a result what will happen? Muscle contraction will occur. Muscle will contract. Okay, fine. But now we don't want that muscle to be contract in this state for a long time. We want it 
to become relaxed now right so what happens if you want to relax it then there is an enzyme there is an enzyme and that enzyme is called esterase this is an enzyme naturally present now suppose that acetylcholine is present here acetylcholine is in the synaptic cleft after uh, the contraction the enzyme esterase it will come and it will break down the acetylcholine acetylcholine will be broken down by the help of this enzyme so when the enzyme a participate then acetylcholine will be break down acetylcholine will be break down and as a result of this breakdown what you will find relaxation of the muscle muscle will be relaxed so normally in the in the contraction and relaxation of the muscle what are involved that is enzyme esterase and acetylcholine fine okay we got this these two are involved the acetylcholine neurotransmitter in the enzyme fine this is a drug this is a drug a nerve gas what happens when we apply the nerve gas to the muscle what it will do here this nerve gas will attach with the enzyme and it will block the enzyme block it will not allow the enzyme to break the acetylcholine when enzyme is blocked acetylcholine will not be broken down not be broken down acetylcholine will remain there acetylcholine will remain here so as far as the acetylcholine is available in that space the muscle will be in the contracted state and as a result of this we will see no muscle relaxation no muscle relaxation sorry slide is gone okay when no muscle is contracted then what happens that all of your body especially the muscle that is involved in breathing like the diaphragm muscle right the diaphragm muscle in the diaphragm muscle if that muscle is in the contracted state you will not be able to breathe properly therefore person dies okay the light has gone but only a small part was little bit disturbed because uh, light was not there the whole lecture is almost completed i hope you will enjoy that lecture see you in the next lecture thank you bye bye